So for today's tip of the day, I want to talk about a category of tools we use to create curves. And why are curves important? Because once you get past the idea of just making boxy furniture and stuff like that, and you start adding in curves, even the gentlest of curves, all of a sudden your furniture pieces, your display pieces, light kind of dances around them a little bit differently. It looks a lot more organic and it adds a lot of class to it. It doesn't have to be outrageous curves, just maybe a slight taper to a chair leg or a chair back or even a cabinet shelf. Adding a slightest of curve will lighten it up and make it look so much nicer. So today, let's explore a little bit about rasps. 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 Yeah. So, here's my collection of rasps, minus two that I, I believe I loaned to my dad. Uh, now, do you have to have a nice expensive set of rasps, uh, metal rasps to make curves? No. In fact, when I started out and when I was teaching, I had a lot of students and I couldn't afford to buy a full set of rasps for each student. I would simply, you know, grab a dowel and wrap, wrap a cloth back piece of uh, sandpaper around it with a little hot glue. To make this kind of gentle shape, I take a block of wood, take it to the lathe and just slightly round it off or just using a hand plane to round it off into this shape, hot glue, sandpaper onto it and there I go. I could even make them coarse, medium and fine depending upon how you do it. Use the back for the flat, the gentle curve and the point uh, for the uh, inside curves. No big deal. You do not have to have a set of rafts to make curves, but it sure does make life a lot easier. Now as a furniture maker, this is more than you need to make all the curves you would need in most pieces of furniture. Uh, I am missing a rat tail, which looks kind of like this right here with the spikes on it, and a, a finer version of this one, a little bit thin, narrower, a little bit finer. And that just does really detailed work, but for making chair legs or, or tables or anything like that this is just fine uh, I was using this in the school and I cannot find any fault with it it's a Shinto style and basically it's a bunch of hacksaw blades with a fine on one side and coarse on the other this works just great now none of these are going to get you a finish ready surface they will get very, very close, but you're probably going to have to go back with a sandpaper or scraper to get it finished ready. But this will do the bulk of the work. And normal maintenance of these, because I look at these as lifetime investments. I doubt I will ever use these to the point where they're worthless. You can resharpen them. It's done chemically with an acid to uh, make the metal come back a little bit. Uh, you can generally do that once or twice. I doubt I will ever have to do it. That's because I don't abuse them. You never want to use brass or metal uh, brushes to clean them out. Just grab yourself a cheap little horsehair brush. That'll get the majority of the stuff out. And if you need to get more, you can actually soak them in a little bit of oil and anything will uh, absorb any wood that's left in the little shavings will absorb that oil and kind of spread out and kind of push themselves out. And then the brush will take care of it. Plus the oil will condition these. That's the other thing I occasionally do is I will spritz them down with a little Camilla oil or jojoba oil and, uh, to prevent rust. Now these are examples of traditional cabinet maker's joints. This one right here is a fairly inexpensive but high quality one from Nicholson. They make a number 49 which is a little bit coarser and this is a number 50. They come with just the metal and I bought a handle before I knew how to make handles. Uh, probably eight years ago for it and it's just kind of a match set that way. Uh, I got these from Lee Nielsen and once again Lee Nielsen gets the metal and they put their own handles on it and these are a roux. They are hand stitch. The difference is this is machine made and that's why they can make them for 40 to 50 bucks. Uh, it's flat on one side uh, round on the other. Now the hand stitch ones are going to be a lot better. You can see even though the machines try to get a random pattern on it, 
it's not that random and as you move these things over wood they kind of create a vibration pattern and you get these undulations even though these two are both very very coarse uh, this one produces a lot smoother finish and actually cuts a little bit better because it's got more space in between each one of the little dimples and the fact that these were really hand stitched. I've seen the guy, guys that make these. They basically take a piece of steel that's been uh, softened, meaning not hardened, so that they can make these little indentations and they sit there and they just go tap, 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 tap making a row at a time and because their hand movement is very inconsistent you get that random pattern on both sides at which point they reheat them up to red hot quench them in oil and that's it they are not annealed so that's why they stay sharp for so long they are also kind of brittle you do not want to drop these on concrete because they are not going to flex at all now, after acquiring these Aru's, I don't really use my Nicholson very much because they just do so much, uh, a nicer job of it. And once again, I have three of them. I just don't have the smallest one here at the moment. And this takes care of all of my needs. And that, once again, they are lifetime investments for me. So let me show you a few quirks about using really high quality rasps. Now, good quality wraps teeth are actually at a slight angle because they make these for left-handed and right-handed people because it's very uncomfortable to push this thing straight. It's a lot more comfortable because they are two-handed to actually do it at a slight angle. Now, this one right here is my coarsest one. I think it's a coarse one Aru makes, but because it... Because it has a very wide gap in here, you can actually make it remove a lot of material by simply pressing down a little bit. But notice it gives you a little bit deeper grooves. Obviously, it's taking more material off. I can also very lightly take a cut. And because you're not pressing down a little bit, just basically using the weight of the, of the rest, you can get a near finish ready surface is not quite there and this is the coarsest one you come back in to refine your curves with a very light cut and all of a sudden you gain a lot of control and you get really really close to your finish ready surface that just requires a little bit to be done with sandpaper to clean out any wraps right here you want to rasp it down flat do not hit one end or the other. Make sure it hits flat, and that stuff mainly will come out. And once again, if it doesn't, a little brush will take care of the rest. So if you feel like upping your game in your woodworking, consider adding some curves, investigating ramps, and using them. Whether it be the ones you make out of sandpaper and dowels or pieces of wood, inexpensive hacksaw blade ones, which really do work surprisingly well. I mean, this might be a great way to get into it. I want to say they are uh, 20 to $35. Don't get the ones that you need to handle yourself. Just go ahead and buy one with a cheap wooden handle. Uh, I bought a bunch of the short ones thinking I would make handles for them and save money for the school. Uh, not worth it. Uh, if you want to, try a set of Nicholson wraps. These have been, been, these have been made for a hundred uh, probably over a hundred years. They are very traditional. But if you really want to up your game, look for some of the hand-stitched ones from French and Italian companies. They are just phenomenal and they will spoil you for everything else. Since we are talking about hand tools today, for today's bonus, I wanted to talk about one of the better online hand tool educators. That's Shannon Rogers of the Renaissance Woodworker. Uh, you can find him there, or he also runs an online school or apprenticeship, or I don't really know what he, ter he terms it, but it is a step-by-step semester-style course. So if you are a dead beginner, or you are somebody who's somewhat intermediate and wants to advance your skills to take it to the next level, especially if you've already kind of plateaued out at a certain level, you just need a little jump start uh, to get that learning curve accelerated, He's an excellent resource. I can attest, uh, I haven't taken his hand tool school, but I did have him out to my brick and mortar school. And 
Maybe it's because he's married to a teacher and she's gotten him a lot of hints or he's picked it up through osmosis, but he's really good at building up your confidence to try stuff. And that's really hard to do. Uh, every coach out there will tell you. And I can tell you, he's been online and has a wealth of information out there for free on both his blog and his YouTube channel that you could learn for years off of just that. But I've noticed these past few years, he's kind of reached that elder statement level as an educator and that he's kind of working through a lot of dogma BS so he, that he can point that stuff out to you. He can tell you what's the simpler solution and why it works just as well. So Shannon Rogers of the Renaissance Woodworker or the Hand Tool School or he's one of three people that runs uh, the Wood Talk uh, podcast. Well worth...